How many of you know that story in John 5 where Jesus goes and He heals that man? He heals him. He's on a bed. And Jesus then, after He healed him, said, take up your bed and go. And He's going with His bed. (laughs) And the Pharisees say, who healed you? Why are you carrying your bed on the Sabbath? Right? He's he's, He's holding His bed, so... I don't know, that could have been a little embarrassing, right? Like, why are you carrying your bed? What, what, what used to be a, a paralytic? Or what, what happened to you? And so he's carrying around this bed. And I just started to think how we also do something like that. Divorce. What I just said, it's not what I wanted, people say. But they have to carry around that bed, don't they? That's that reminder. We, as much as we want to forget about it, we don't want people to know about it. Correct? We don't want people to know about it. We're carrying this around. Abortion. Oh, there's a famous singer now. It was in the news this week. She so regrets ending the lives of her children for fame and fortune. And she's got to carry around that bed. Prodigals. Any parents have kids that aren't living where they need to be living with the Lord? That's painful, isn't it? Very painful. And we say, and I hear it a lot, and I weep with them. I've tried, I tried to be a good parent. I tried to be a good parent. And they're carrying around that bed. This is a hard one. Honestly, I'm being transparent this morning, too much show maybe. But this is a hard one for me because my, I live in a fishbowl. So any little thing my kids do wrong, it's magnified. And then I have to walk around with the same bed and if you if you if you've had divorce abortion and prodigal then you're carrying a heavy bed and life will begin to weigh you down my health is failing lord i believe but help my unbelief i've got financial failure anybody had a financial failure and been embarrassed you've got to carry that bed around part of the story i didn't tell you 24-hour fitness is in my 20s i had a custom home in quartz hill in my 20s Six figures back in the 1990s. That's not too bad. And God called me. I just had to let everything go. Stock options, everything go. And it took a while. It took like six months. I went and got an apartment. So I'm not moving with my mom. Heck no. That's too embarrassing. And then after the savings runs down, guess what? I said, Mom, but don't tell, you don't tell anybody I'm living here. And to make money, what I have to do, I had to go grab shovels and digging bars and dig ditches. I'd I'd be at people's homes, they'd be like, what are you doing? What? Um, I'm a Christian now. (laughs) What you used to be, what happened to you? Carrying that bed. Don't you hate when your sin is seen by all? This man was carrying his bed around. Broken marriage. I don't know what else to do, Shane. I've tried everything. My marriage is broken. And people know it. They see you and they're, where's such and such? And you carry that bed around. They see you carrying that bed around. Addiction. I keep falling. I keep failing. And people see it. Isn't that embarrassing? Come on, let's be real. You get up in the morning like, what did I do? What happened last night? Oh my God. And people are joking. I'm just glad they didn't have social media when I was partying. Golly. Poor kids. Man. It's on film forever. And they keep carrying this bed. My sin is in front of everybody. My failure is in front of everybody. What about regret? Anybody say, I wish I could do things over again? And so I thought, why am I still carrying my bed? People think that. Why am I still carrying my bed? Why do I have these reminders? Why do I have this pain? Why do I have this shame? Can anybody relate? It's like we want to look like Superman and super Christian. I've I've straight from straight from seminary. I've done great. I've I've no problems. And look at this. My all five my kids serve the Lord, and they're walking with the fullness of the gospel. And I've never no marriage issues. I don't think we've ever argued. Woo! And we feel that way. It's, it's, why am I carrying? Why am I still carrying this? Why are these reminders here? Why is this pain here? Why is this shame here? Anybody have shame over their past life or what they've went through? And Jesus says, yeah, you're still carrying the bed. You're still carrying the bed, but before you met me, the bed was carrying you. 
Yeah, you're carrying around those things. You're carrying that bed, but before you met me, that bed was carrying you. And we pray, oh God, this morning, take me, break me, and make me. God is the shepherd of the shattered. And I, I think we had up there earlier, Johnny Erickson Tata. Do you know who she is in the wheelchair? She said, God permits what He hates to accomplish what He loves. Let that sink in. God permits what He hates. Something going on in your life. Something breaking you. Something happens. He permits it because He wants to accomplish what He loves. In other words, He wants to help you. He wants to get you through it. He wants to develop you. Matthew 21.44, Jesus said, whoever falls on this stone, meaning Himself, will be broken in a good way. But whoever it falls, it will grind him to powder. So Jesus is saying, calling them to repentance, fall on this stone, fall on me, let it break you, let it humble you. Because when I come back and I judge the world, if this stone has to fall on you, it's going to grind you to powder. You see, we have a choice, no matter what you believe, technically, sociology-wise, or, or what we, 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 we know that God will judge people based on their decision to accept Him or reject Him. So I think we need to rest in Him. I don't know where you're at this evening or this morning, I should say. Rest in Him. Don't run from Him. Run to Him. How many of you run from God? Run back to Him. That is the key. Repent and return. Repent and return. Too many people think lightly of sin and therefore lightly of their Savior. Don't minimize sin, guys. In a culture now that minimizes sin, we need to put it in its right light. It is disobedience against God. He calls us to repentance. I'm going to leave you with this um, takeaway from John 5. John 5. In John 5, Jesus heals this man. And the man is laying on a bed. And He heals the man. And then He says, okay, take the bed with you. Take this bed and go. So He's walking around with this bed. And the Pharisees see him and go, why are you carrying a bed on the Sabbath? Like, well, these guys, man, unbelievable. Right? Jesus just heals the guy. And it shows the hardness of the heart. So he's carrying around this bed with him after Jesus healed him. And it kind of reminded me of what I, experienced, what I talked about earlier. Divorce as well. Many of you are still carrying around that bed. It's not what I wanted. I didn't mean to end up here. And it's like you have that limp that will not leave, or you have that thorn, or you have that you're still carrying your bed. I don't want people to see my bed. Can you relate? I don't want people to, know, to see my shame. I don't want people to know my story. I don't want people to know my past. Especially in, in people say in this area, or what about abortion? I was young. I was young. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. But we have to carry that bed. Prodigals. You have prodigals in your family. You try to be a good parent. Isn't it embarrassing sometimes when the kids don't obey? And you have to, you have to carry that, that bed and you carry that, that shame and, and guilt that you feel. Or financial failure. Anybody have financial failure? It's embarrassing, isn't it? You thought you were all that. You're doing great. And then God begins to remove that area of your life. And you have to carry around that bed. Or a broken marriage. So many broken marriages. And People come to church and their spouse isn't with them. And they have to say, where's your, where's your spouse? Well, we're not, it's not going good right now. The shame, the guilt, they carry that bed. Addiction. I keep falling. I keep failing. Anybody relate? I keep falling. I keep failing. And, 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 and it's shame. Family members know. And people know. And, and now you gotta carry, you're still carrying this bed. Can I get rid of this bed? Can't I get rid of this bed? I've got so much regret. Why am I still carrying my bed? My, it's my reminder. It's my pain. It's my shame. But here's the thing Jesus says is, yeah, yeah, you're still, you, you're still carrying your bed. You're still carrying your bed, but before you met me, the bed was carrying you. 